Hey guys, it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up here, and today we're going to be having a chat over Zoom with female drummer Stefanari, who is in the new show Drama Queens, which will be at Sydney Lyric Theatre this February. We have a chat about the show, as well as talk about what she has been up to since she was last on the show in 2014, and also being a drummer for Marsha Hines. There is so much to cover, so let's get into it now. Steph, it is a pleasure to have you on the show today. How are you going? Hi, Laura. I'm great. How are you? I am fantastic. And I, I guess I should say welcome back to Rave It Up. For those who don't know, Steph was on our um, past radio show since we finished the radio show up now, back in 2014. Jeez, that time has flown, hasn't it? <laughs> It feels like a whole lifetime ago. Oh my goodness. It, it does feel like that, doesn't it? it uh, I was just saying to Steph before we started recording, like how much we've achieved in that time, both of us, you know, now Rave It Up is a podcast and YouTube series. I am amazed at all the stuff I see on social media with what you've achieved too. So congrats. <laughs> and congratulations to you too. Oh, thank you. We're going up and up. We're just making the world proud, aren't we? <laughs> that yeah. Power. We did meet originally through our mutual friend Ramos, didn't we? You know, he goes yeah, by right. his real name, Naransom now. And I I think your first time you were on, you just came on with him on the radio show. And then we brought you on as a, as a solo interview, didn't we? Right. As I said, it feels like a lifetime ago for me to even remember that. <laughs> yeah. Now your latest project that we're all very, very excited about, and I'm so proud of you for, in February this year, you're performing in the new show, Drummer Queens, at Sydney Lyric Theatre between February 6th and 14th. So everyone, go buy your tickets now if you haven't already. And i got to be honest, Steph, when I first heard about the show, I was thinking, how can you make a whole show about drumming? <laughs> but from reading the press release, uh, you know, it's supposed to be kind of like pushing the level of drumming from all different angles. Can you please like tell us more about this and what we can expect if we yeah, so, buy our tickets? Um, in our, you know, eight fabulous female drummers of cast that we have, it's not just, you know, eight drum kit players. We've got a range of different types of styles and specializations amongst the whole cast. So we've got drum kit players. We've got people that are classically trained that play marimbas. We've got some dancers. We've got wow. some type of drummers. It's like a real vast range of people. So mm -hmm. don't expect, you know, just constant 80 minutes of drumming because it's not the case at all. Like there really is a variety of things that you'll be seeing and, you know, all percussion related. So it's not always just about banging drums. It's it's more than that. We can do more than just bang drums. It's There's so many layers of percussion in the world, which is great. And we really showcase all the different things. So it's every act is something different, which I really, really like. And I think it just keeps you wanting to see, oh, what's next, what's next, what's next. Mm. So yeah, it's really good. That is really cool. I, I need to come along now and check the show out myself. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. Well, ne next next month, so it's coming up quick. And I, I gotta say, it must be a dream come true for you to have, like, you know, be in a whole show dedicated to drumming when it's, you know, the thing you love the most to do in this world. Yeah, hundred percent. Like this show is my dream come true. Like, oh. and for me, um, I'm not just a kit player that sits in the back of the band. I actually like to get up on stage. I consider myself a performer, not just a musician. And mm. this show is just literally ticks all my boxes. I get to play drums. I get up on stage and I get to show my goofy personality. Like it just, <laughs> it's fun. I love oh, it. You gotta pinch yourself. You're like, I'm getting paid to do this. This is a job. <laughs> I'm doing eight hours a day of drumming. It's awesome. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Well, make sure you just oh live in it, and otherwise, yeah, the time schedule is going to go so quickly. Well, yeah. So there's eight women in total, an all female cast. Woohoo! Girl power. I was like so happy to hear that. <laughs> you don't see many shows like that, unfortunately. And to the audience. Trust me, you'll be in complete awe of their talent because I remember the first time I saw you perform, just I was blown away each and every second. So I know that you, and you've also gotten better and better over the six, seven years since we last spoke. So I know you will not disappoint. And I did have a look at the um, 
promo video too. Really cool promo video. Everyone go check it out. And I see there is a part where drums are like swinging from side to side. Isn't that dangerous? I'm yeah. sure you got to like make sure you're on your mark so you don't get hit, or <laughs> hit and blown over. That one is, yeah, that one is very specifically timed. Like mm -hmm. every single push, every single catch, everything has got to be precise every single time. But it looks so cool and it, it is does. so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> How so, long did that yeah. take to uh, finesse then since it's so timed? Well, Oh wow, <laughs> definitely a lot of time went into that specifically. So, but in saying that, we have so many different movements and staging, like really cool staging things happening throughout the show that, you know, a lot of time has gone into. Like, mm. yeah, we've got really cool visuals happening in the show too, not just the drumming, which is cool. So, is that your favorite part of the show, do you think, or do you have another favorite part? Uh, I do have another favorite part. Um, I don't but want to guess you much can't share. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to give it away yet, but there's another really, really cool part as well. All right. Well, just look at her face. Like she's, yeah, it must be really, really cool. So we're just going to have to yeah. make sure to see the show to see what you mean. <laughs> Maybe after the show, you can let me know which, which is your favorite part. And I'll be like, yeah, that was my favorite part yeah. too. <laughs> You'll be able to guess. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm intrigued now. <laughs> I've got to say the... Yeah, all you. It must be a soul. Uh, That's what I'm yeah. thinking. Hmm. <laughs> mm, got me thinking. And those red outfits that you girls wear look awesome. Very badass. Are they comfortable or are they very hot to performing? Because they look like a really thick fabric. Does it give you much room to move? Uh, these ones, we've got new ones made. So oh, these cool. ones here have a stretch into them, which is really nice. Uh, we actually have two different costumes. So the one in our promo picture where we've got that yellow and white and black, mm. um, which kind of is individual to our characters. They're really cool um, and they're comfortable. And then we change into the, the red outfit where we become a team basically. But um, yeah, they're actually it's more comfortable than it looks, which is good. Oh, that is good. Cause I saw the red outfits and it's got like the buttons up here and I'm like, can that be comfortable? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but we had old ones with buttons and stuff like that. I think this one's a bit more open. Mm. So there's, there's more room to breathe and move around, which is good. They were just the promo jackets, it looks like, <laughs> just to make it look cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what was the audition process like for you for Drummer Queens? Did you just have to improvise something on the spot or was there like a song specifically chosen for you to perform? Um, bit of column A and bit of column B. So okay. they gave me a and said, um, play this piece, show your personality through this piece, and then it was, all right, show us something that you specialize in, that's you, that your personality comes through, show us what you got, basically. So mm -hmm. there was two parts to it. Oh, cool. Was it nerve wracking? How many people were, were uh, watching you? Um, it was recorded. Oh, so really? That time, yeah, it was all like video submissions, which is good. And I think a lot of um, auditions these days have been online and submitted like that so mm. it was pretty good because then it meant I can <laughs> take it as many times to get it perfect and send it through yeah that's good. true COVID's definitely yeah. changed how everything's run now including auditions <laughs> that is the perk to the online submission <laughs> Yeah, I, I gotta agree with that because I know I've spoken to a lot of people about auditions. It could be for shows like this, it could be musical theatre. Like a lot of people have have struggled with auditions because they're just so nervous, and you know the the can I call them the judges are literally just staring at you and judging everything you do to see whether you fit the mold of what they want. But video submissions, yeah, as you said, you can just keep recording it over and over again until you're happy with it. That's it. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, look at that. You must have done a good job. You got the job. So, <laughs> and in this show, is there any dance choreography that you've had to learn and master as well? Yeah, a hundred percent. Well, not necessarily uh, dance specifically, but a lot of choreography with movement. Mm. So it's never, no performance is ever just static. Um, so there's been a lot of movement with drums because we've got some drums that are on wheels and oh, we do cool. a whole piece. They were all like pushing the drums around all over the stage and so that movement and actually I lied there is a little bit of movement in that one a little bit of dancing but I'm okay with that I did you know take a dance so I'm all right 
Well, I was going to yeah. say that's very new for you because usually you're just sitting behind the drum kit, you know, doing the the drums for, say, another artist, you know? Yeah, and this is why I'm saying I love this so much is because I get to get up. I get to, you know, I do love to dance. If I go out, I'm the first one on the dance floor. So for me, I'm like, yes, let's do some choreography. <laughs> right. I did not know that about you. That's awesome. So this must have been yeah. really easy for you and fun. Uh, sometimes it made me feel so uncurt. It's like I can play a whole drum kit, but I can't sway side to side. And I'm like, oh yeah, now I've got it. Yeah. <laughs> you just got to make up your own choreography, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's very like, nope, this is what you have to do. <laughs> yeah, make it look <laughs> as natural as possible, sort of. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, well everyone should go buy the tickets now if they haven't already you'll be i got a, i had a look too tickets are only like from 49 dollars, like not very expensive at all and it's gonna be a fun night out so i don't see everybody can afford it <laughs> depends where you're gonna sit i guess and i did you i did notice you're going to melbourne in april as well and then brisbane in may i have noticed more shows in melbourne than sydney though why is that <laughs> I don't know, to be honest. I'm so um, sad. I'm like, oh, there's not that many Sydney shows. <laughs> um, I think the idea is that maybe we will come back to Sydney later in the year. Ooh, to kind of start in Yeah, don't know. So we'll see how it all goes and provided COVID permits and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So a bit questionable, but yeah. Well, it's all up I'm in the air. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Enjoy it while you can. And I get to perform a show every day, so yeah because it. it has been a show that's been around for a while hasn't it when, when was it created because i actually hadn't heard about it before um drama queens was created maybe about seven years ago um and i've been in it that long so i'm an original member of the cast in this group which is awesome yeah um but we kind of did a lot of corporates kind of little shows here and there but now it's really you know the dream was to turn it into this big show and now the you have. Yeah, they pushed it and here we are. So it's a dream come true, not just for me, but everyone involved, really. Mm, the hard work's paid off. Yeah, 100%. Mm. So was that around when we last had you on the show then or was it just after we spoke? Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Oh, it's all come around full circle, have you noticed? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah, the ne next time I have you on will be when it's a huge show. Yeah. <laughs> And, and yeah, successful, which is awesome. Yeah. Well, I had a, I, I'm, I'm going to admit, a little bit of a uh, social media stalk. That is part of my job, I guess. <laughs> and you've really met some incredible artists through this journey of this show and promoting it. You did teach Samantha Jade how to do a drumstick twirl on your Facebook on January 6th. And then on the 23rd of December, you actually performed Little Drummer Boy with Shannon Knoll from the Woolworths Carols in the Domain on Channel 7. How was that? Had you met those guys before? Um, I feel like maybe I had met Shannon at another gig years ago, but not performed with him. Mm. So to be able to perform with him was really, really cool. And I think he sang that song so well. He did. Uh, I liked how he just brought that rockiness out of it, which is really cool. Um, Samantha Jade, I'm not sure whether I've crossed paths with her before, but it was really cool to meet her and show her the drumstick for. She was really sweet and such a nice person, so it was just nice to be around someone who was so humble and willing mm. to give it a go and be a part of it. So, but that whole experience was seriously fun. It was such a fun gig to do. Oh, the promo was fun. It's all about the uh, the journey, isn't it? Then the uh, end destination. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's great. You know, like I haven't met Samantha Jade yet, but I really do get that vibe from her whenever I watch videos of her or see her sing live. I'm like, she just looks so humble and she's like a real go-getter. So it didn't surprise yeah. me that there was a video of, you know, her with you and learning how to do this drumstick twirl. And it was like, good on her. Like, you know, even if she did horrible, embarrass herself, she doesn't care. Just get out there and have fun. <laughs> Yeah, and I know, yeah, I've actually, I've had Shannon Noll on the show too, and he's just so lovely. Like, I feel like, you know, even in the media, he's really portrayed in the wrong way. Um, but, you know, when you actually meet him in person, he's the loveliest guy and he loves what he do. He appreciates his job and, you know, people have got to see that side of him. So check out that interview, guys, if you haven't already. <laughs> really, yeah, gets down and personal with us, which is good. And yeah. 
Drummer Queens was created and composed by Joe As Asaria. I think that's how you say his last name, isn't it? <laughs> Akaria. Akaria. Oh, sorry. I pronounced the C wrong. But I have I have met him and he's lovely as well and interviewed him back when he was uh, doing Velvet the Musical with Marsha yeah. Hines. That feels like a, cent like a century ago as well, but what a small world. And speaking of Marsha Hines, I have looked on, this is what it says on your Instagram bio, but you are the drummer and percussionist for her. That is incredible. Is this permanently now or just when she was doing Disco Inferno last year? No, when she does her personal shows, it's me who plays drums. <gasps> Look at you! Yeah. Going up in the world. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> How has it been working with such a legend? She is such an Aussie legend. Been around for decades. She is the bomb. Hey, I love oh, the mark. She's lovely. They are my, apart from drummer queens, when I'm doing other gigs, that is my favourite gig to do. Like, it's just a fun vibe the whole time. It's disco. It's just such a positive and upbeat vibe. And it's just so me. I love it. And oh. she's awesome to work with. She's a lot of fun. She's such a cool. <laughs> she is. She really is. And so funny. Have you, have you gotten, <laughs> since she has been around the industry for so long, have you gotten any entertainment industry pointers from working with her? Um, what I like about Marsha and something that she taught me was know what you want. Mm. And so like if we're doing sound checks for a gig, be specific and don't be afraid to say, this is what I need to hear. This is what, how I need it to be. Because at the end of the day, we're the ones up on stage. And if we're not comfortable and happy, then that kind of ruins the experience for everyone involved. Mm. So that was something I learned was to be okay to say, this is what I need. This is what I want. It's not about being arrogant. It's just about making it all good. Yeah, we've all got to do your own individual job so that it all comes together beautifully. Yeah, 100%. Mm. Well, that's good. Yeah, take take that into every gig that you do from now on. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, stand up for for you and, and your craft. Yeah. <laughs> as cheesy as that sounds. <laughs> Uh, something else you've done since we last spoke, I saw on your Instagram, is last October you were in a Helga's Bread commercial. That is cool. What was that like? That <laughs> you was like it. It's out there for everyone to see. <laughs> um, it was probably one of the most different types of things I've done before. I would, yeah, and I agree. I was playing guitar, <laughs> so <laughs> I can do. Like I do play multiple instruments, so that was cool that I just... I sat there the whole time on this like little thing and just strummed away and it was like, all right, two hours done, see you later. And <laughs> that was that and I'm like, cool. So that was the whole day, just two hours. That's so short yeah. for a commercial. <laughs> yeah, it was a couple of hours and yeah, they had other locations to shoot at. So it was pretty much get in, get out. I'm okay with that. It was a fun experience and it was just funny seeing myself like on TV for like two seconds on. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh no, she's gone. All right, see so yeah. oh, It was my two hours in two seconds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just to get the Incredible. right angle for the right time. Exactly. Uh, yeah. It was fun though. I like it. You think you'll do more commercials in the future? If, it... if they come up, I'm not going to yeah. say no. Provided oh. they do it a bit. So, yeah. <laughs> Some Somewhere in the Drummer Queens and Marsha Hines time slots. <laughs> Yeah, seems so chock a block full already that yeah, we'll see what happens. Only January, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> January. I'm already like, wow, this one year seems so huge already. Which is great. I'm not complaining considering last year it was like I nothing. did maybe what three weeks of the whole year, which is unheard of. Yeah. Oh, that's all good. Well, it's it's gonna be a big year from now on. I feel like this is the year yeah. for everybody. Just yeah. go away, COVID. <laughs> That's what we need. Yeah. <laughs> and, and also, you have played the drums on TV for Australia's X Factor as well. I really wanted to know, is that nerve-wracking at all, being in front of, like, all those cameras? Because I know there's not just one, there's heaps. Or yeah. do you find it easier, you know, doing that in front of heaps of cameras than performing in, like, in front of a huge crowd like you, you know, will be at Sydney Lyric Theatre? Because that's a huge theatre. <laughs> Uh, I think it's two different vibes, to be honest. Uh, and when I did X Factor, that was probably one of my first real professional um, television gigs. So for me, when I did X Factor at the time, it was new and really nerve wracking. I absorbed every bit of it, but it was like 
the experience level has gone from here to here now. Um, but it is a different vibe. I think when you're in front of those cameras, um, I don't know, it's different because when you're live, you're really feeding off that audience. Mm. And it's just you're in that moment, connecting with an audience. It's hard to connect with a camera. <laughs> There's no <laughs> emotion there. Like when we did Cows in the Domain, there was no audience. Oh my goodness, really? Oh yeah, it was COVID, I guess. No, they wouldn't be. Um, just when those like Avalon Northern Beaches clusters had just started. So they said, oh. no audience. So we had this big number and we had to perform it like there was an audience there, but it was really hard to vibe with no audience. It's hard to vibe to a screen. If that makes sense? Yeah, 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 so, I get it. <laughs> Yeah, so like I know when we do these city lyric theatre shows, I know we are all going to just absorb that and appreciate being in front of humans again and just feeding off the energy. It's just, mm. it's a different vibe. I do, I'm not saying I don't like um, TV stuff. I love doing that stuff, but I think nothing beats a live um, gig feeling. Mm. What's even better is when it's live and filmed. You get best of both worlds. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 150%. Yeah. Oh, what an exciting life that you have. <laughs> You've worked hard for it though, so good on you, girl. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's interviews like this that I really bring you back to, to your past and you relive it all. It's some good stalking there, Lauren. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Yes, it's part of my job. <laughs> now, as you know, since you were on the show six to seven years ago, that our show was all about having fun and talking about the great sides of the industry. But we also yeah. do love talking about the hardships and the difficulties that we go through in the entertainment industry, you know, the, but they do make us stronger though. That's how I, I view it. <laughs> you got to take with, you know, the good with the bad. And yeah. as well, you know, this is such a motivating show that we want to share with our audience that, you know, life is too short to not do what you love, you know, go find your passion in life. And if they want to be in an entertainment industry, I think it's good to just share with them the realistic side too. It's not just all about, you know, making heaps of money and being famous and, you know, a lot yeah. of the time that doesn't even happen either. But <laughs> so I did want to bring up with, you know, some hardships and difficulties, especially with you because you are a female drummer and like, let's not be stereotypical, but a lot of the drummer jobs go to males. I think that's so unfair. Have you found it hard to find opportunities in the industry because of that fact? And do you find you get a little bit judged because, oh my God, you're a female and you're a drummer? What are you doing? Um, I do feel like sometimes there are very male dominated bands that happen mm -hmm. um, and they kind of have their clique where it's like, yep, yeah, let's just get the boys in. And, and I think one of the reasons why drama queens came together, funny enough, this is Lily Sin, was Joe Akari, I noticed that there were an enormous amount of really good female drummers in Sydney. Mm, so that's, that's good that he noticed that. that. Yeah, and that's why he put this show together to say, hey, there are all these females that can do exactly what all us males are doing and they're brilliant at it. Mm. So that's why I joined Drum Queens when I did so many years ago, because I was like, yes, I, I can do that gig just as good as you if not better and I'm you know more than capable of anything thrown at me so you know I do feel like sometimes it's been a bit of the boys got the gig over us or me um, but I think I also have had some other really incredible opportunities come my way that I'm completely grateful for and I think everyone has their own path and everything has happened the way it has so, and I think things are changing. And, you know, one of the reasons why we're doing this is to change that stigma. Mm. Well, everything happens for a reason, you know, maybe you weren't supposed to get some of those gigs and now this big opportunity's yeah. come up. Yeah. And I feel like the show is a bit of a movement. Like yeah. when you see it and everything that these girls can do, man, it's mind blowing. It's oh. just how the girls like, yes, we can do it. I and love shows like do, that. Yeah, we do it so well. Like some of these girls, watching them do their thing in what they specialize in, it's just mesmerizing. I love it. Mm. I can't wait to see it. You know, as I said, I love shows like this and to really show that women can do whatever men can do, you know, just give us the opportunity to show you. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, good on you. I, I think I'm hearing uh, rehearsing in the background, am I? <laughs> I was like, oh, gee, it is probably. We're Sorry. getting a sneak peek of the show, just a little bit. Open while they're rehearsing right now. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll just keep talking to uh, talk over it. <laughs> and something else it's I do like want to. Background. It's background <laughs> music. It's very nice background music. <laughs> just yeah. adding adding the oomph to what you're the message you were sending. <laughs> Yeah. Perfect timing, girls. <laughs> yeah. uh, something else I do want to bring up because I have been bringing it up a lot lately with all my guests because it is something that every single person in this world can relate to is getting through COVID. And I know we are getting to the end of it now, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, but it looks like we are. But all through last year, yeah. as you said, you only worked, what, three times, which is unheard of. So it was a very big difference yeah. for you. And, you know, I already, well, I know and um, I have shared with a lot of our audience that in this entertainment industry, you know, it is hard to just keep a steady paycheck. You know, we got to keep finding other jobs. It's, you know, very much like freelance work. We're not just always, you know, in a full time job, you know, we got to keep finding it. So how did you find getting through last year, especially mental health wise? I'm sure that it was big struggle and very stressful to be like, oh, my goodness, how am I going to survive? <laughs> Yeah, hundred um, percent. You know, and I'll be completely honest. I feel like I was a roller coaster the whole year. I had times where I was like, "Yes, I finally have time to sit and just practice and focus on my skills." And I'd be really motivated and I'd practice, and then like within a couple of days or the next week, I just felt so low and down and wouldn't even want to pick up my sticks and just felt so deflated and defeated and because we were so unsure it was always like oh my god when is the next time i'm going to be able to play drums with real people and have that live music experience again um it was hard i'm not gonna lie like i know that i struggled mentally i definitely did um but i also am super grateful i'm a high school music teacher so i had that supporting me throughout the year otherwise i really feel for or felt for those musicians who are 100 percent full-time musicians they really took a hard hit so I'm really grateful that I had my teaching to get me through last year otherwise it would have been really hard and I saw my Facebook was full of people struggling and I, I felt for them really badly but mm. so I'm not gonna complain but I did have you know my mental struggles too going through it it's, it was hard to not be creative when that's what I've been doing since I was 11 years old it was really mm. hard so how do you think you got through those days that you did feel good? Was it a lot of gratitude for what you already have? Yeah, hundred percent. It was just going, look what I've, I've achieved already. Um, and yeah, I guess being grateful that I had a teaching job where I still, you know, I'm a music teacher. So I kind of took the gratitude in that, that I still was able to have some kind of music in my life too. Mm. So it kind of made me appreciate that a little bit more as well. I think that kind of helped. Plus with working so much over the last six or seven years, it was probably nice to have a bit of a break. <laughs> yeah, that too. It, I, I do appreciate that. I think sometimes when it, it gets too much, it clouds your head mm. and it's not a bad thing to just say, you know what, I need some time out. And I feel like it forced people to just have some time out, which is good because we've all come back firing and ready to go and to work 10 times harder. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh, definitely me too. It got to the point, like at the beginning, it was like, yes, great. I have some time to put towards other things that I've been wanting to do for ages, just didn't have time to do. Yeah. Get the things done on the to-do list. But then near the end, you're like, okay, I really need to get back into work. Like, give me something. And yeah, now we're just, we're fired up. Exactly. We're ready to go. Yeah. It was a good pressing the pause button, as I like to call it. It was, it was a bit of a pause. I'm mm. also a very routine type of person. Like, I like knowing exactly what I'm doing. I get into a groove. Me too. <laughs> it's a routine. So I was like, oh my God. So I kind of found, you know, I go for a walk every day or I go for a run every day to try and make a little bit of a routine because mm. physical me is super important and so I was like okay this time every day I'm going to go for a run or a walk or go play soccer or just something to just simulate the mind and get those endorphins running again well oh, that's good I know a lot of people just got lazy and ate a lot <laughs> I tried not to <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a bit of a balance like a little yeah. bit but gotta keep that physical fitness up I was exactly the same <laughs> yeah. 
And even though you've already achieved so much in your career, Steph, what else can we expect from you in the future? You said you've pretty much, you know, got heaps planned this year already and it's generally January. Yeah, it's mostly the drama queen stuff really for this mm. year. Whatever comes from that, I'm going to be eternally grateful for. Um, I don't see myself slowing down anytime soon. I feel like I'm only going harder and faster now. So um, I yeah, don't know. <laughs> expecting to see more of me drumming I just within the last few months of doing this I feel like my skill level has gone from here to up here and it just makes me want to work even harder and just deliver all of me now which is great I have the confidence to do it now which is good oh well, we are looking forward to anything that you achieve we'll just follow you on social media and get the goss <laughs> so much Lauren <laughs> And I know you answered this question last time you were on the show, but it was seven years ago, so I'm sure it has changed since then. Do you have any advice for our audience who might want to follow their dreams of becoming a drummer or something in the musical, you know, realm? Yeah, 100%. Um, don't ever compare yourself to someone else's journey. Mm. Your journey is your journey. Whatever you are meant to achieve will happen to you for a reason. So don't ever look at someone else and go, yep, we do the same thing, we're the same age, but this person has done more than me or whatever it is. Don't worry about it. You're on your journey, you're on your path, you keep going and you will get to where you need to be in the right moment, in the right time. That's mm. I think the big thing that I needed to learn over the past few years. I couldn't agree more, especially even yeah. with, you know, media out there now and seeing celebrities on magazines and stuff and you're like oh i feel so crap about myself but you know just yeah just do don't you social media that really is yeah. you know there's a fake front to that and don't sit there and look at your instagram model and mentor and who or mm. someone else just you know do a similar thing to and they're posting all the time don't necessarily believe it yeah because they could taken a photo like three years ago and posted it today and gone, look at this awesome gig I did. No, you actually did that a long time ago. So mm. don't fall for that. Well, they, yeah. they always call it the uh, the highlight reel. Don't compare their highlight reel to your like blooper reel, you know? <laughs> yeah. I love that phrase. <laughs> yeah, 100%. It's true though. Mm. Well, yeah. we are unfortunately getting to the end of the interview, Steph. This has gone yeah. so quickly. I could not believe the time has <laughs> flown. <laughs> But as a closing statement, and was probably the most important question. Knowing what you know now, what would you tell your 14 year old self? You can do it. You can, can do it. absolutely oh, it. do it. Simple as that, because I think I lacked a lot of confidence and like a similar thing, like comparing myself to other people. But the biggest thing is, yep, you can do it. That is all that I needed to know back then is that, yep, you can do it. Oh, love it. So simple. Couldn't yeah. agree more with it though. Yeah. Look at you now. Heaps of confidence. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> but humble. Yes, absolutely. Very humble and lots of fun to always be around. Thank you. You're welcome. It's always a pleasure. And before we go, if the listeners would like to contact you, find out what you're up to in the future, where should they go? Where do we go follow you? <laughs> Instagram is, I like Instagram the most. So I think it's just Steph with an F. So S T E F underscore drums. You'll find me there. Perfect. Or easy. if you're the Drama Queen's page, you'll find posts of me and you can find me through there if you get lost. <laughs> yep. yeah. And I'll tag you and everything too so people can find you. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Steph. It's been so me. much fun. <laughs> As always. As always, of course. I just knew like as soon as I saw you were in Drama Queen's, I was like, yeah, I want Steph. I, 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 it's someone I've already interviewed and I know we've gotten, we get along so well and we have not spoken for ages. So I was like, it's time to catch up. This is a good excuse. Thanks so much, Lauren. You're welcome. And if you want to come on the show in the future to chat about some future projects, you're always welcome. Just consider it your second home. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Can't wait. Thanks, Steph. Well, I hope you'll enjoy today's interview. If you'd like to check out any of our other interviews, visit our website, raveituptv.com. All of the podcasts and videos are there for you to enjoy. And make sure to also check out our new podcast on Spotify and all of the podcasting platforms, as well as our YouTube videos. But for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.